Good evening, women of Sri Lanka. My name is Ilona Budapeste. I'm president of Oxford Entrepreneurs and chief storyteller at One Million Women to Tech. Ramila Aziz, thank you for having me. Please introduce yourself a little bit. I will do the same. And I encourage you, if you're watching, start putting your questions in immediately. Um, don't have to wait until the Q&A. So if you know what the One Million Women to Tech Summer of Code is about and have questions, please start commenting. All right, Ramila. Yeah, thank you, Ilona. I'm Ramila Aziz, dialing from Sri Lanka. First of all, I thank you, Ilona, for humbly ac accepting our invitation and coming on live to answer this Sri Lankan. I think it's pretty amazing talking to them. I think they have a lot of questions and they are waiting to ask questions. So over to you. Awesome. I want to acknowledge those who are live. Iroshan Mitanage, hi. Jaya Sanka, Vira Singh, hey, hi. Yanix St. Aline, Knen Semnan, Oshani Virakun, Ali, hi there. And somebody from the Sustainable Education Foundation uh, administration. Thank you for being here. Can we get a thumbs up from you in the, in the comments? And can you tell us which city you are watching from? Please type it in and send it. All right. So while we're waiting for people to give some thumbs ups, I am going to manipulate the screen here. <laughs> Inosha says, yes, hi, hi. How about the others? Awesome, all right, let's, uh, I would say let's, we can dive in. Awesome. Um, Ramila, you might have to change a little bit the screen because the, the banner is cutting off a little bit from the top of your head. If you want to point the camera a little to you. Uh, yes, maybe. Yes, perfect. You're perfect. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, Biber is from Barcelona. Hi. Okay. Well, we have international audience. Let's get started. Um, Ramila, is it okay if I first explain what it is? And then maybe you, you could describe a little bit of why it is good perhaps for women in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Okay. Yes, let's do that. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. So uh, you can join, by the way, uh, anytime by going to facebook.com slash one million women to tech. And there you will have a link directly to the sign up link, which I will show later as well. The Summer of Code is a three months program focusing on bringing more women into software development. It all happens online. It's a combination of 12 weekly courses and hackathons. And it's an opportunity for you to compete in global remote teams, have fun, create challenges, learn Python, JavaScript, and much more. So when is it happening? It will happen between July 14th and October 14th. So. Um, we are bringing this to you from the University of Oxford and Silicon Valley. So for us, this is the summer break, so to speak, and we try to cover the whole three months. Where is it going to happen? Well, wherever you are, because it's 100% online. Okay, so you can, you can, as long as you have an internet connection, you can do this. Any skill level. Who is it for? This is really important. When we go through with Ramila, the specific courses and the levels of challenges, we really made sure that there is something for the complete beginner, the false beginner, the intermediate, as well as the engineering student, the STEM student, the computer science graduate, and even somebody who has a PhD in computer science can come and work on the, your own portfolio items, your own projects, and we can give you research questions that are rather hard to challenge yourself. So it's, it's, we're really trying to be inclusive. Um, now, I have very good news for you. When we made this poster, we had 5,000 women pre-registered. But as of yesterday morning, can I get some drum roll here? We have 10,000 women pre-registered from more than 110 countries. So I think I, we're getting a little thumbs up here. I'm going to show you that. <laughs> Hi, Shaibala. Thank you for the thumbs up. Awesome. Can we get some thumbs up for the 10,000? Uh, number. 
And that's really, really meaningful because the mission is to provide free coding education to 1 million women by 2020. So as of yesterday, we, reached, we achieved the first percent as in terms of signups. Not quite deliver yet, but at least the signups have reached 1%. So thank you to all of you. Um, where to pre-register? The website itself is, I don't know, it might be a little too small to see here. I'll try to change that. It's 1millionwomentotech.com slash summer of code. But perhaps it's a little easier if you are on Facebook already. Oh, thank you, Yannick. It's perhaps a little easier to do if, uh, well, I think some, some technology issue here. Anyway, it's easier if you go to the Facebook site, One Million Women to Tech, and from there the, the big call to action button will land you directly on this link. So it's one million women to tech.com slash summer of code. Okay, before we go further, uh, Ramila, would you tell me a little bit why you got excited about it or what you hope this will bring you and what you think it could bring to other women in Sri Lanka? Yeah, personally, it is to improve myself because uh, whenever there is a challenge uh, and if you go and participate there, you improve yourself. and. I think it should be the same with other ladies as well because ladies are born multitaskers and <laughs> they are perfect and they are amazing. So go and get the challenge and challenge yourself and improve yourself. Yeah. Wonderful. Yannick, thank you for saying great purpose. Purnima Megamana, thank you. Chaisa is amazing and the and the bring her up. Amazing. Okay, so I think I will just go into the courses as to what you can learn. And afterwards, uh, maybe we can a little bit talk about the organizers. So Oxford Entrepreneurs from Oxford University and One Million Women to Tech, which is an educational charity from Silicon Valley on what's happening and what the benefits are for you if you pre-register or if you volunteer and what other ways there are to get involved. Okay, so week one. The first four weeks are kind of uh, Python heavy, so it's like a Python track, but you can pick and choose. You can do just one week, you can do all of it, it's really up to you. First week is Introduction to Python. This is a course that we ran here at Oxford University, and without any advertising, it immediately got 1,200 likes and interests, and when people came to the room, they couldn't get into the room, uh, it got so packed. Um, which was very interesting for us because it is a completely beginner-friendly course, but it showed us that there is an interest, um, and it was very diverse, completely many women and men. Hi, Malsha, Gunaratna, thank you for the thumbs up. Python week two is um, more intense. It's, it still goes from zero to the language basics, but if you come from another language, this this will be very good for you because we go through all the quirks, uh, dictionaries, lists, uh, list comprehensions of Python, and it will be a very uh, dense introduction, but very good, so that in one week you don't have to do months and months. In one week you can get familiar at least with the syntax of Python, so how it's written. Week three, we do introduction to natural language processing, NLP. So how many of you are studying humanities or social sciences here, or in business, or in marketing? This course will be awesome because we will give you the toolkit um, and we don't assume much Python, really. If you've taken week one or two, you can do it. We'll give you formulas to crawl the web, extract statistics from text, and start interacting with textual sources in a programmatic way that perhaps you haven't done before. Any questions so far? Feel free to type in. I see all of your comments. Cool. Um, then week four is introduction to AI or artificial intelligence. This will be tutorial style. So Google's TensorFlow is one of the uh, most well-known ones. It means that you don't actually have to create the algorithms. What you have to understand is how to prepare your data and what is possible uh, in terms of clustering um, with supervised and unsupervised learning. This is for Python. This is, uh, 
I think so far so clear. Can I get some thumbs ups if that's clear? Cool. I'll go on the other four weeks, uh, which is JavaScript heavy. This is if you want to be a web developer, a mobile developer, you want to start your own app or your own tech business. Yeah. Introduction to JavaScript. Again, it's gentle. If you've never coded before, you're lucky. This will be fun. It will be rigorous, but it will be digestible. We will also have advanced homework each day so that if you are already more well versed, then you can just jump in and enjoy. Advanced JavaScript is quite intense. We will go through the quirks of the language. One of the reasons why Node.js is also so popular on the back end. So this, this will be quite intense. If you come from other languages, this will be awesome for you. Build your app in seven days is week seven. I'm quite looking forward to this, by the way. This is more about prototyping. So we want to help you to create a installable prototype without coding, uh, just the UI and the UX onto your phone so that your friends, family, uh, and perhaps other participants can try out your mobile app and you can decide by the end of the week what would be the best minimum viable product or MVP for your app. And week eight, React.js, this is Facebook's open source JavaScript framework for mobile app development. We will do a deep dive and help you to get started with actually building out your application so it's not just a frame on the mobile but people can use it and it interacts with the back end any questions Yannick I'll answer your question about volunteering uh, I'm gonna come to that a little bit later and the last four are fairly advanced this is for you if you want to get your hands dirty with some new technologies so we'll spend a week on blockchain Making your own wallet is definitely. Uh, we're trying to, 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 to put together something that you can do within a week to create your own cryptocurrency. If, if that doesn't quite work, at least definitely the wallet and the, the setup will be clear to you. Virtual reality will be week 10. Augmented reality week 11, we'll use Facebook's AR studio. And week 12 is a surprise because we want to hear from you what you want and then we'll source uh, the instructors and the material for you. Okay, I will give it to Ramila for a second. What do you think, Ramila, who, who, what type of person could benefit from this? Yes, you know, a total beginner who is new to this uh, tech field can start from scratch. And Python and JavaScript, those are powerful languages and in order to get to know about the concepts, you need to learn from the basics. And these languages are super because they are easy to understand. And when it comes to, let's say, specific interest, there are categories like virtual reality, augmented reality. So those type of courses also benefits these kind of people who have specific interests and also this is cool because you can learn by doing, not just hearing what the sessions are about. You learn by doing. So you challenge yes. yourself. So, yeah. That's a very good point, actually, because I ask, I get this question, what's the difference between the Summer of Code and the MOOC? Um, the difference is that everything is live. So you actually, like here, you get to interact, you get to ask questions. Uh, also, the difference is that you end up with portfolio items that you can showcase to your future future jobs, um, or you can actually start working on your own business. So this is your chance to get support for whatever you are working on, uh, as opposed to doing projects that perhaps the MOOC has designed for you to, to, to build. Yeah? Um, so I think it's more tailored. Cool. The, um, the Facebook page is Facebook slash One Million Women to Tech. If you click the sign up, it should land you in our main website. And the main website here on the top, you should see the pre-register button, which will land you in the pre-registration form where we ask you about your background, uh, of course, your contact information, uh, your coding experience. We ask you a lot of questions so that we can make something that will work for you. So please take the time and, uh, and enjoy the process. The, uh, the question came up here from Yannick about volunteers. 
So right now, if you wish to volunteer, there's a volunteer sign up here on the website. We are looking for volunteers. Uh, translator is uh, mostly just for translating the the information about the program because within the summer of code you do need to know basic English not a lot but you have to understand basic English so the volunteer translation is if you wish please sign up here on the volunteer page and then on the Facebook page you will see we have a group internally where you can join as a volunteer and you have more information on how to move on what you could help is to translate these emails that we are sending to universities so that they, it's, if it's in their language, then you, you know, they can send it to the women uh, in their location. So we have an other language is wanted. Um, if you have a translation, feel free to, to make it and upload it. And we have daily meetings with the volunteers every day, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. British time. And you can come and contribute. I have another question here. Okay. Shai Bala Tripathi. Hey, Ilona, right now I'm doing Python from the unit as provided in the group. Being in a, a beginner in the Python, I feel there's less practice material to check. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, great. Um, great question, Shai Bala Tripathi. So the materials in the Facebook group are just to get you started they are pre-summer of code they are not quite fully fledged we just collected some good starts it's a very good point thank you so this week we will try to add some i think what you're asking is sort of exercises right so that you can see how well you can do so we'll try to find you some exercises very good question good yannick says thanks waruni punchiheva What's the selection criteria for the program? That's excellent question. That's an excellent question. So here's what we're thinking of right now. To be honest, at the beginning, we didn't think there would be this much interest. Our goal, to be honest, was just 500 women globally to, to even pre-register. Uh, the fact that there are now so many makes us think that um, we will select each week probably uh, 500 women for whom this will be life-changing and give them a chance to do this live and to receive mentoring so that you can receive code reviews and uh, coding challenges. So in that case, the criteria from our perspective is engagement and reliability. So are you opening your emails? Are you coming to the live, uh, the live Facebooks? Uh, are you coming to the webinars? Are you interacting in the Facebook group? Are you consuming the material? Are you asking good questions? Those people will be more likely to be selected. And personally, I have a weakness for single mothers. So if you're a single mother, we might send out uh, a questionnaire uh, to see if you are, because we want to give uh, some scholarship or some acceptance to those. Other than that, we would like to have a cross section of those who want to get into a job, those who want to freelance from home remotely, and those who want to start businesses. So these are the three areas where we think that this technology education could empower you to make more money and therefore have more success in your homes and have more flexibility and have more security and have more comfort for you and your family. So these are the three categories we're thinking about, plus the single mothers is more of a demographic group rather than uh, a goal-oriented group. We're still working on it. If you look at the website, um, so if you go here, you will see the timeline. We will close the pre-registrations July 1st, and that's when the team will get together and decide really who is, who is the most, uh, who will get the most out of this? However, the benefit to you to pre-register, even if you don't get accepted, is that you will have access to the materials. So those who get accepted will have live support and individual chance to interact. And you will, and if you complete the exercises and compete in the hackathon, you will get a certificate of completion from Oxford Entrepreneurs and One Million Women to Tech. So this is if you get selected. But if you pre-register, even if you don't get selected, you will have access to all the material. 
Okay, so that's the benefit of pre-registering and joining the community. We will not make the material available openly to to the to the larger world, but since it's free to pre-register, we think this is not a problem. This gives us an idea on the demographic that is consuming the the courses and allows us to make it better and better. Is that answer the question? Yeah, that is high, high. Uh, and one more question. So when will you know who is selected and who's not? Here in the timeline, this is on the main website, there's a timeline section that explains the steps. So July 1st, we'll close the pre-registrations and then we will uh, notify people by July 7th uh, if they can get a spot. If they can get a spot, then they can register. And July 12th is your last day to cancel. If you cancel, we ask you, if you can't make it, I ask that you cancel so we can give your spot to somebody on the wait list. Cool. Ramila, do you have anything to add? Oops, sorry, let me add, unmute you. Yeah. Please go ahead. Actually, a lot of people are asking me what happens to the ones that uh, pre-registered but not get uh, selected for the program. So actually, you asked the, the question. So Great. Yeah. 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 I would love to accept everybody, to be honest. Uh, it's just that we have a resource limitation. So this is a volunteer-run charity. Uh, there are about 41 of us between Silicon Valley and Oxford University who are running this part time on our own time. So, it, you know, right now this is the limitation. But uh, to be honest, this is the first year. And if we can reach 1% this year, maybe next year we can make uh, more opportunity for more people. So that's the advantage of you succeeding here. Yannick says, women in Haiti have a lot of reticence, even if they know it's important. How to overcome this obstacle? Yannick, what do you mean by reticence? Meaning they are reticent to code or they are reticent to apply for jobs? I will try to interpret the question. Uh, well, tell them this is free. It's from Oxford University. It's from Silicon Valley. You know, there. When are you going to get a chance to interact directly with you know Oxford faculty and students and engineers from companies like I don't know. We we, we are working now to get Oxford University Press and Facebook to join and support you. And what a great opportunity! And it's practically free, um, except for your internet connection and your computer. I mean. Um, I would just say, yeah, tell them to try it. Once they join, especially if they're Facebook users, I must say, Ramila, would you give me a thumbs up in the video if you agree? But I say there is a lot of beautiful interaction, women to women interaction inside the Facebook group. Would you agree? Yes, I. Um, you are doing something. What I, was, uh, no. what I was trying to answer, Yannick, is how to convince women who are a little bit reticent or afraid. And I said, inside the, inside the Facebook group, there is so much positive interaction between women that it's worth for them to just, just register mm -hmm. anyway and check it out. And once they feel comfortable, then they can join. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Reticence to code. Oh. You can tell them it's a literacy skill. Literacy means reading and writing or numbers. This is just for the next generation. This is like reading and writing. If you can't write any line of code, it's almost like not being able to read and write. Just, you know, spend the summer, learn a little bit. And the, the nice thing about this one is you can just commit to one week. Like you don't have to commit to a three year course or a four year course or even several months. You can just try it for five days. I mean, every, anybody can do something for five days, right? So show them how easy it is, I would say. And then Confidence comes, I, I, I believe, confidence comes with small successes. So once they have a small success in one course, it's actually not difficult. If you code, you know this, right? So once they have a small success and receive the encouragement, then I think the appetite will be there. So just show them how easy it is to take the first step. That's, that's would be my answer. Malsha, Gunaratna, what kind of support can we get locally in Sri Lanka? That's a very good question. I would say at the moment, because everything is online, you will receive the support online. 
So if you're admitted, you of course have the live option. You will also have a Slack and we have a help desk where you can put in your coding questions and engineers will be helping you. So this you can do in Sri Lanka anytime. And the, the Slack and also the, the help desk is asynchronous. So it's 24 seven, you can ask whenever you want. Uh, we will probably be active during daytime UK time. Uh, I apologize for that, but that's, that's what we can do. And uh, we are now looking into supporting some local organizers to get a local group that can come together. Uh, but it's not necessary, especially if you have children, maybe there's no childcare or you cannot leave the home. We want to make sure everybody can come. Um, I would say keep an eye on the Facebook page, the One Million Women to Tech. And if we have local events, I think Ramila is, is quite active. So if, if she puts together a local event, she's your country coordinator, uh, then maybe you can have some local get together. Great question for Ramila. Ramila Aziz, what are the challenges you have for the Summer of Code in Sri Lanka and how will you overcome them? Okay, okay um, as I think, uh, there are mainly three challenges. First one is, um, although you uh, individually apply for the summer of code when it comes to hackathons you will have to build up teams and for those teams if they can work together in some place let's say if they have co-working spaces and if some organizations can help find some co-working spaces that will be great and uh, the second challenge i think uh, will be that uh, they need mentors good mentors because uh, Depending on the expertise of the mentor and opinions, they can improve. So they can always add something to the amazing thing that they are building so that it becomes super amazing, right? And, uh, and also um, another challenge would be that, uh, let's say, it's not all the beginners that are doing this, uh, that are registering for this program. And there may be some students who is uh, doing thorough research and they may be trying to solve a research problem. And let's say if they need uh, more resources and more funds let's, to get the maximum out of this program, maybe uh, some organizations willing to help them can, uh, yeah, can add something to this program because uh, we need all the help we need um, so that Sri Lanka can improve. Yeah. Cool. Okay. There are some very good questions actually here. I think we will put these into the FAQ. We have an FAQ that I should just point out. It's bit.do slash sock FAQ. It's also referenced on the Facebook page. These are such good questions. Uh, I think we'll add them to the general frequently asked questions and answer them. Uh, this is, by the way, open to all of you. It's it's a freely viewable Google Doc that everybody can comment on. So if you don't see a question, please add this. And we are working on this every day. Um, Varuni asks, Varuni, Punjiheva, could you tell us more about making teams? The members should be from the same uni. Great question. Um, we're trying to be as flexible as possible. So no, they don't have to be from the same team can work remotely if your internet connection is good. If you worry that your internet connection isn't good enough, then we do recommend that you try to form a local group or, or if it's just fun or if you are a single mom and maybe it's easier for you to get together with other moms, um, we let you decide. The team formation is now being discussed on how we can do this more. Um, when I taught at Hack Reactor, which is considered the Harvard of coding boot camps, we used to have these um, team meet and greets where we did spontaneous team formation. So what will happen during the summer of code is every Saturday morning when a new weekly challenge opens, we will have an hour of moderated introductions and team formation, which will happen through Slack and through a Google document where you can Put down your interests and your location and we help you to 
to, to match up with others. You can work on a remote team globally if you wish to work internationally, by the way. Cool. Um, Anusha has a very good question. Thank you, Varuni. Anusha Lihala, will the registrations be on a weekly basis or for the whole program? This is a great question. Uh, originally, we thought we'll do it for the whole program. And then we discovered that what happens is those who have a PhD in computer science will probably want to do AI, right? They don't might they might want to do, but they might not want to do the introduction to JavaScript. Vice versa, maybe you think that you have time this week and something happens to you. You know, you sign up and then we give you a spot and then something happens in life and you took away and you can't do it. And then you take away a spot from somebody who really, really, really needed it. So I think we will do um, a week by week. However, if you're pre-registered, um, I think we'll switch that to a wait list once we start so people can continue joining. But anyway, if you're registered and you're within the community, then we will make sure that the material, the replays, and the code is all available to you, even if you don't have it set. Cool. Gunel is giving us a heart, uh, two heart eyes. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Gunel. Nova. Great. Are there any other questions? There's something I wanted to uh, say, which is the structure of time. Sorry, Ramil, I'm going to mute you for a second. So there are 12 weekly units, right? But we are also planning three one-month hackathons and one overarching open category. Why? Because maybe you want to actually build something more serious, like you want to create an app. You want to create a new... Uh, data project. So this way you can join the weekly hackathons. And even if you aren't taking the course that week because it's not directly your interest, you can still continue getting support and continue making progress on your challenge. And you can get some highlight for your for your project because of the visibility of the event. And if you want to do a really major one, we'll have an open category that's for the whole summer then you can work, well, in three months' time, a whole team of people can actually achieve a lot. And I encourage you, if you have something in your mind that you've always wanted to sort of try, uh, bring it to the Summer of Code and use this as your opportunity to try. OK, can we get some thumbs up for that? Is that clear? Yamuna Ratnayake. Wow, Yamuna, you're great. You have really excellent questions. How many registered from Sri Lanka, Ramila Aziz? <laughs> Ramila, do you want to take that question? Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, I now checked uh, the leaderboard. Uh, it's 412 registrations. And uh, the time I was registered, it was like 28 applications. So this is very happy news. It's 412. Yeah. You, so you have changed the lives of at least 390 women, hopefully. <laughs> Gunas, like hug, hug. Thank you for the hug, the smileys. This is open to you, by the way. This is at bit.do slash sock world cup. We are running an alternative world cup. If you follow, uh, if you have any male friends, the soccer world cup is happening from June 14 to July 15. <laughs> Shai Bala, thank you. <laughs> and so we have Sri Lanka at number eight at the moment. And the way we calculate this is we take the number of pre-registrations and divide it by the most recent population number that we could find so that small countries can compete with big countries. And you're doing very well because uh, I think when Ramila started and signed up, uh, Sri Lanka was number 55, 56. Uh, I mean, it was really quite low. And... Uh, now you've overtaken, I mean, you've definitely overtaken India. Uh, look at that, even though they have 860. But they only have 860 applicants compared to how big the country is. And you have 400. So that's why you're on the top. Um, I wonder, maybe Sri Lanka will end up on the top. Who knows? <laughs> but every country wins who is here. So um, we recommend that you take advantage of this wonderful opportunity. Please. Um, Give us your ideas and suggestions. And um, if you're able to help, if you have expertise in either project management, design, marketing, uh, business to business outreach, or any other skill that you think um, 
or if you oh if you have impact measurement like educational uh, skills please let us know because that way we can provide an even better experience to everybody oh yannick says applause yummy <laughs> applause applause to you. okay applause to sri lanka yes <laughs> ramila can you give an applause as well please Great. <laughs> well done, everybody. Okay, uh, that's it for me. Lots of smiley faces coming in. Gaya Matumali, thumbs up. Yamuna Ratna Yake, hearts, thank you. Mal Shaguna Ratna also. Shaya Bala Tripati, thumbs up and hug. Back to you. Are there any other questions? The Angel. Hi, D I am Dina. I don't know where the course and materials will be. Okay, so we will send those to you via email. And after the registration start, that's when you will see it. However, there are some pre-learning materials already inside the Facebook group. So if you go to Facebook slash one million women to tech dot com and go to groups and request to join, then there is a free learning section that you can start pre-summer. So then uh, you can find it. Shai Bala Tripathi, marketing and legal. Oh my gosh, please, please come volunteer. We need you, we need you. <laughs> Aisha Dayan, hello. Smile from Sustainable Education Foundation. Wonderful, thank you. Do we only take female mentors? Oh my gosh, that's a great question, Yamuna um, Ratnayake. That's a very, very good question. This whole week, I'm debating and discussing with people. What do you think? So can we take a little vote? If you have a choice, um, what's your preference? Would you rather have female-only mentors or mixed mentors, male and female? Can you please type it in? Because I really don't know the answer. We need to ask you, the community. We have some guys now, actually asking if they could mentor and a lot of guys who want to join. So they cannot join, I'm sorry, but they, the mentoring I, we're still trying to discuss. Can you please vote below? So would you prefer an all female or mix male, male, female thing? And I'm showing in the meantime how you can get to the group. So you click on the groups here on the left and then there's only one group attached to the Facebook page, which is called Women helping women coders. So here is where the learning materials are, if you're looking for. Yamuna prefers mix, Gunal mix. Okay, awesome. Mix, okay. Cool. So if you prefer mix, then here is my question to you. I'm going to stop sharing the screen for a second. Um, so if you prefer mix, then how can we make sure that we, we keep a safe space for us. Uzgem also says prefer mix. Bieber says mix just to have more of them. <laughs> more is not always, more is, more is good uh, if we can keep it safe and fun and good. It's just, you know, that the ratio of men to women in technology, at least where I'm from, like in Oxford, we usually get only 8% women to tech events. So it's like 9 to 10. So if we open it up to guys, we might end up with thousands of men trying to mentor. And I'm just, I mean, I, I am a little worried because I have been a software engineer for a decade in Silicon Valley and in Japan and the UK and Europe and in China and I, and I lived in the Middle East and lots of places. And the truth is if, if you let all the guys in, how can we ensure that they are not, that every, every one of them is respectful and never says anything that could turn away somebody who's just getting started, you know, who is fragile, who's, this is their first event maybe. Like, how do we ensure that? Anusha also says mix because then there'll be more mentors. Both, but I will suggest more female mentors, yeah. I mean, female mentor, we still have to make sure that they are nice, right? It's not like women can get also nasty. That's not the problem. But I'm a bit worried about, uh, I'm a bit worried about that, to be honest. Mix? Bieber says she understands what I mean. The objective of women, women to tech is to promote women in tech, so mentors too should be. Thank you. 
Uh, I think we need almost a separate Facebook Live for this because this really gets to the core of things. Um, one of the problems, for example, in Silicon Valley is that several of my software engineering friends who are women said that they always get called to these women's events to mentor, for example, for free. And it takes away so much of their time that now they don't have time for their own professional development. And so I want to avoid that. Uh, at the same time, I think that having a role model as your mentor and teacher is much more beneficial than just getting the technical knowledge. So, um, yeah, let's figure something out. Uh, I, I tremendously admire men who support women. It's the most beautiful thing in the world. And it is good to learn how to work with them as well. But let's find a safe way and a good way that we can do this and not just open the doors uh, and without thinking. Waruni also says both male and female. Oh, Masha says female. Okay. It's not Khan seconds my step. Thank you. Maybe we can accept some and then it's a case by case way, but then again, we can actually interview them. Yeah, exactly. It's difficult to interview them all. Um, role model part. Yeah, I'm worried about putting, like, imagine a total beginner who's never went to a hackathon and finally, finally they find the event that they're comfortable with. And then you put, you know, like their first interaction will mean so much and if you put maybe a man in a power position ahead of them I'm worried about that at the same time the goal is to bring women into technology so maybe what we could do is we can have an all women section yeah for people who, who like it and also maybe we can have the local events being all women and then we can reach out to the local community who is going to it's going to be male heavy everywhere you go in the world it's going to be male heavy in a technology environment. We could reach out to them and be like, hey, we have all these women in this country or in this city. Uh, do you have an event they could go to and receive some mentoring? And then, you know, it's sort of during the same time as the summer of code, but it's not the women's angle. It's just professional interaction. So I wonder if maybe we could, we, we could keep, I'd like to keep a safe place, to be honest. And then we can use this to, to allow people to transition in, and if you prefer or you want, then you can have these male mentors locally uh, for you. Yeah, you're right. I agree on the role model part. Okay, that's an interesting discussion. I think this will be the hardest thing for us to figure out. Um, so, thank you so much for all of your feedback. Are there any other questions? Ramila, please tell us uh, finally uh, some encouragement to Sri Lankan women. Yes, uh, first of all, I'll tell about my experience because uh, I'm currently an undergraduate and I have been to hackathons, multiple ones, but I have been in situations that I am the only girl member in the team. And actually, it's very rare to find 10% participation of women when you go into events like that because uh, if you there is no bias when it comes to skills depending on gender you can improve either you are female or male you just have to try and believe in yourself and work on it so there is no discrimination when it comes to skills and improving yourself so what do you think Ilana? wonderful no i really appreciate that um I feel about 80% of the pre-registrations come from beginner and false beginner, and about 20% come from engineering, STEM, and computer science. This is what we're finding right now. My request to you, all of you watching, may I make a request? Is that okay? Can I have a thumbs up if it's okay to make a request? Is um, to talk to three people in your life about what you're doing. Don't even don't even ask them if they're interested. Just just tell them, hey, I'm doing a summer of code. It's for women. It, com it comes from Oxford University. It's free. It's online. And I'm really excited. And see what reaction you get, both from men and from women, but mostly from women and non-binary individuals. If they show any interest, then share the link with them. Ask if you can share the link with them. Please don't spam people. That's not the point. If, if they really want to do accounting or hairdressing, let them. But if they have a tiny interest, please find out. And the human-to-human -human communication is really meaningful because this way, instead of spamming somebody or tagging on Facebook, you find out. And this is how you might actually find your best supporters and your best teammates. Um, yeah, that's my request. Is have have a conversation with three people, and if they're interested, please <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
he's invited. Excellent. So um, there are some funny things. At the moment, we reached the 1% mark of 1 million women uh, for the pre-registrations. If we go at a linear pace, we're doing some forecasting here, maybe some data scientists out there. You, um, we, we fitted some different curves on it, polynomials and whatnot, but those are fickle. So just for fun, we thought, okay, let's have, what if we fit a, a linear curve on it? If we keep growing at the same rate as we have since the opening of the registration, then we will reach 1 million women by February 3rd, 2037. <laughs> so um, you will see here, I, did a, I do a little Facebook live every morning, 9 a.m. Uh, British time. So please join that if you have other questions. It's on the, oops, I'm not showing my screen, sorry. our goal do you think okay let me ask you do you think 1 million women to tech is possible by 2020 if you think so say yes possible so the question is do you think by 2020 we could reach the 1 million that's the end of 2020 let's be generous yeah so December 31st <laughs> do you think it's possible if you think it's possible, give some encouragement. Yes, possible. Okay, Sanda Lukalpane thinks it's possible. Tatiana Vasova thinks it's possible. Great. If you don't think it's possible, you can also give a, uh, uh, you can do it up down, which is not sure. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, we are discussing now how to keep growing at the end of the pre-registrations and so Ramila, what do you think? This is what came up in the discussions. Probably what we will do is we'll start a wait list, but anybody again who registers for that wait list will have access to the materials. So we won't be able to give certificates, we won't be able to give one-on-one -on -one mentoring, but we'll be able to give materials. And we are already receiving requests for a winter of data. So summer you can learn to code and work on coding and winter you can work on your data. Uh, skills. Winter, of course, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, that's actually not winter. Um, maybe we'll call it something like holiday data or data holiday or festival of data, like a music festival. But uh, we'll try that. <laughs> Ramila says possible. Anusha Lihala says possible. Varuni Punchiheva says possible. Okay. If you think it's possible, then we can make it work. Great. Ramila, uh, I think we can... We can uh, wrap up here. I'm going to show one more time how to join. Oh, Malsha says, proud of you, Ramila Aziz. You are doing great. Thank you, Malsha. Okay, Ramila, shall we give a round of applause to all the women and the supporters who came and watched and the non binary Good, thank you so much. Uh, please, pre-register, please invite those who might be interested. Don't spam those who aren't. If you know of any universities or mother's groups or, I don't know, yoga class, cooking class, anywhere where there are lots of women, please ask them. Or if you find a very intelligent woman serving you a meal or in a coffee shop, I don't really know Sri Lanka how it works, but here there's lots of jobs that are service jobs that women do. Ask them, you know, would you like to you'd be interested, do you have a computer? Um, invite them, you know, change their lives. Um, and every day, 9 a.m. on British time. What's that, Ramila, in, in Sri Lanka? It's 1.30 uh, p.m. 1.30 p.m., great. So every day, 1.30 p.m. Sri Lanka time, we, I do a quick uh, Facebook update on, on this page here, the facebook.com slash one million women to tag. And it's live, so after the announcements, I take questions, and if you have questions, feel free to ask them there. All right, I think that's it. Yannick says definitely yes. Masha, again, says proud of you, Ramila. Good, I think I'll finish there. Ramila, thank you for this wonderful opportunity. I must tell you personally that at Oxford here, I'm doing a master in Buddhist studies, 
and I'm actually studying Pali. I'm studying Pali with a Sri Lankan accent, to be honest. <laughs> so it is really, really my hope that one day I get to meet all of you in person uh, because I have a very warm spot in, for Sri Lanka in my heart. So thank you for having me. All right. Thank you. Bye. Hello. Hello.